Welcome to the Harper Classroom, series of instructional videos. This video is on exponential smoothing with Excel. In this video, I will focus on one parameter exponential smoothing where the parameter is alpha, the smoothing constant. It's also called smoothing parameter, smoothing variable, smoothing number. In this video, I will focus first on the development of the exponential smoothing, where I cover the concepts, mechanics, assumptions, and characteristics. Then. I will use Excel to do calculations in exponential smoothing and then end with extensions of exponential smoothing. Let's first look at the concept behind exponential smoothing. Well, here's a description. The forecast we're obtaining today for tomorrow is a combination of the data today and the last forecast, which we have today, which was generated yesterday. So today we have a forecast and a data. We're combining those with alpha to come up with a forecast for tomorrow. Well, this alpha ranges between 0 and 1. So if alpha is 1, then 1 minus 1 is 0. The last forecast is ignored, and my forecast for tomorrow is just whatever I observe today. In other words, if alpha is 0, then the data is ignored, and my forecast for tomorrow is just whatever forecast I have for today. So as alpha ranges between 0 and 1, my forecast will range between the last forecast and the data I observe today. In other words, if my data was above my last forecast, then my forecast for tomorrow is going to be a little bit higher. If my data is below my last forecast, then my forecast for tomorrow is a little bit lower. And so I correct my forecast on a day-by-day -day basis by whatever data I observe. Now if I take that and apply it to an equation, my forecast for tomorrow, t plus 1, is alpha times my data for today plus 1 minus alpha times my forecast for today, where alpha ranges between 0 and 1. So now, Let's look at calculations. Assume alpha is 0.2, so 1 minus alpha is 0.8, and our data, assume is a given, we have five data points. The only thing we don't have to start the method is f, and there's a lot of ways to get the initial forecast. In this course, to keep it simple, uh, let's just let the data point in time period 1 be copied down as the forecast in time period 2. So now I have a d and an f. I can take the d and an f, multiply the d times my alpha 0.2, then my f times my uh, 1 minus alpha 0 0.8, do the, do the arithmetic, and then that becomes the forecast for the next time period. So there's my first iteration. Now I, I have my d and my f, I multiply and add, that's my forecast for the next time period, and then the next time period, I just keep going down. So it's an iterative technique. So now let's do this in Excel. So let me bring in Excel, I've already typed in my data, and so let the forecast in time period 2 equal the demand in time period 1, and then my forecast is my demand times my alpha plus my forecast times my 1 minus alpha. Now since I want my alpha to be consistent all the way through, I go back and take my alpha, F4 to freeze it, my alpha here, B2, F4 to freeze it, and now I can just copy that down, and there's my forecast. And if I can look at this and compare this with what I have, and there's my forecast of 200, 202, 206.6, 213.3. So that's how to do this in Excel. So let's return to the concepts of exponential smoothing by looking at some assumptions and characteristics. A one-parameter exponential smoothing model assumes a stationary time series with only a random component. So exponential smoothing is a moving average, where the weights are exponential weights that are exponentially decreasing in the past. Therefore, we assume an infinite window for exponential smoothing which implies using all the data possible. So let me illustrate the exponential smoothing weights and the infinite window with this example. Let's take the equation and repeat it. Now the forecast for time period t plus 1 is a function of my forecast in time period t, but that's a function of my demand and forecast in time period t minus 1. But t minus, f of t minus 1 is a function of t minus 2. 
t minus 2 a function of t minus 3, t minus 3 a function of t minus 4, etc., etc. If I substitute these in, I have one equation. Again, this continues on. I do the arithmetic, and now watch what happens. Alpha times my data for today. Alpha times 1 minus alpha to the first power is my data t minus 1. Alpha times 1 minus alpha squared is t minus 2 to the third power t minus 3 to the fourth power t minus 4, etc., etc. So here's where the infinite window is implied, and here's where the exponential weights are illustrated. So now let's look at the characteristics of exponential smoothing contained in the parameter alpha. Well, for large alpha, as alpha approaches 1, the forecast then is dominated by the data, resulting in an enhanced impulse response. An impulse is something in the demand data that's important, like a signal or a trend. And if that's important and we want to respond to that impulse, then we want our forecast to be dominated by our data. So to enhance that impulse response, we increase alpha. But for small alpha, as alpha approaches zero, the influence of the data is reduced, resulting in enhanced noise dampening. Well, if the variability in our demand data is noise, a random component, and it's not an impulse, then we want to dampen it, or smooth it, or reduce it. To enhance that noise dampening, we decrease alpha, and as alpha is decreased, then the influence of the demand variability in the forecast is reduced. Let's see how this is done in Excel. So let's bring in Excel. I've already calculated the forecast and plotted the demand in the forecast where my demand is in my blue and my forecast is in my orange for an alpha of 0.2. Now for large alpha, my forecast will be dominated by my data to have an enhanced impulse response. Let's see how that works. So when I go from 0.2 to 0.3, notice my forecast increases. 0.4, the variability begins to move toward my data. 0 0.5, 0 0.6. If I go all the way to 0 0.9, notice that my forecast here almost mirrors my data. If my alpha goes all the way to 1, then my forecast mirrors my data delayed by one time period. So as I increase my alpha, it'll be dominated by the variability in the data. Well, if that variability is an impulse, then I'm going to respond faster to have an enhanced impulse response. Let's go back to point two. What about small alpha? The uh, forecast will have a reduced influence from your data. So I have an enhanced noise dampening. So if this variability in my data is just noise or random error, I want to reduce the influence of that noise. So if I go to point 0.2 to point 0.1, and notice how that noise is dampened. 0 0.09, 0 0.08, 0 0.05. And notice how the noise in the time series is dampened more and more. If I go all the way down to point 0.01, and notice the variability of my demand data is pretty much removed. But I've generated this data to range between 100 and 400. So the stationary mean is 250. And notice since my initial forecast is 200 and my alpha is so small, it takes 97 time periods and I still haven't quite estimated the 250. But if I increase alpha here to 0 0.02, notice that I can estimate that 250 a little bit faster with a higher alpha because I'm responding to the information in my time series. If I go to 0 0.03, I respond even faster, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. 0 0.05 here, it took me like 20 time periods, and now I've responded to the forecast. So for small alpha, we do dampen the noise, but also the forecast has a greater influence from our initial forecast. So, so that illustrates how alpha can be used for enhanced impulse response and enhanced noise dampening. And the way that's done in practice is as much an art as a science. So let's look at an example of an application. We start with an alpha small between 0.1 and 0.3. And 
And if the data indicate an impulse, then we want to increase alpha to enhance our response. But a significant impulse is indicated by a significant bias, which is detected by the increase in the magnitude of the tracking signal. So what we can do is coordinate the smoothing constant alpha in our exponential smoothing with the magnitude of the tracking signal, T sub k, in our forecast accuracy measures. And this implies an adaptive or automated forecasting. But the way this is done really depends on the time series, depends on the company, depends on the objective. So it depends on each individual application. So to do this correctly, I would need real data. So I welcome people to bring me data, and we can go through this process on a case-by-case -case basis. We also have extensions to the exponential smoothing models. This video is looking at the one parameter exponential smoothing where we have a stationary time series with a random component. But you can also have a two parameter exponential smoothing where you have a random and trend components or random seasonal or cyclical components. And you, ha you can have a three parameter exponential smoothing with a random trend and seasonal or cyclical components. Now mathematically, theoretically, you can have more than three parameters, but the one, two, and three parameters are, very, are more common uh, in industry and applications. So this ends the video on exponential smoothing one parameter. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.